Hello all, today we'll be working on DNA sequence, sequencing with the help of machine learning. Now, machine learning is being used extensively in medical science, okay, let it be if you want to, machine learning and deep learning, both are basically being used in medical science. Suppose if you want to predict whether the person is having a cancer or not, so machine learning is being extensively used in proper algorithms and trying to reduce down the error also of the predicted outputs. Today, we'll basically be understanding how we can do DNA sequencing. Now, usually, you know that our DNAs, human beings, basically DNA in human beings usually consists of AT, ATGC, uh, different kind of, uh, you know, sequences that are basically present. So here, uh, I just came across a wonderful data set in Kaggle. And from that, I've basically taken up this particular project. And what I've done is that by using DNA sequencing, I have basically applied a classification algorithm which will be able to you know classify this particular sequences in human like what kind of what uh, kind of gene class they belong to okay uh, again you may be confused about gene class i'll just show you different type of gene class that are basically present in uh, this particular data set but uh, make sure you watch this video till the end because you will get to know a lot of things because uh, i also learned a lot of things from this and so i prepared this thing for you all. Uh, so to begin with, what I'm doing is that I downloaded the data set that was present in Kaggle and I'll be uploading all this, this Jupyter notebook and the data set in the, uh, I'll be uploading it in the GitHub and the URL will be provided in the YouTube description box of this video. So initially, to begin with, I have some of the libraries that I'll be using like NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. And after that, I have the data which is called as human underscore data dot txt. Now, when I read this particular data set, I basically have sequences and another feature that I have is basically class, okay? Now, based on this sequence, we should be able to predict what class it belongs to. Now, this sequence may be the gene sequence or a DNA sequence of a particular human being and they are basically classified into various classes and this particular classes, I'll just show you this particular information. Apart from this particular data set, I also have some data set for chimpanzee data and dog data which I got it from Kaggle itself. And this particular data set will also be having the same thing, which is called a sequence in class. So what I have done is that I have basically applied a classification model after applying DNA sequence in human underscore data. I would like you to please perform or please implement for chimpanzee data and dog underscore data. Okay. So please do it because you learn a lot of things. Okay. Now to begin with, after I read this particular data, let me just show you what kind of classes I basically have. So if, if that particular gene sequence belongs to class zero, this is basically of a gene family called as G protein coupled receptors. Whereas if there is class label as one, uh, that is basically called as tyrosine kinase. And I'm not uh, pretty sure about all this gene family because I'm not an expert. -y. But uh, this particular data set, uh, uh, you know, I just retrieved it and I just saw what are all these classes and I just tried to show it over, over here to you. And this number basically shows that class label is present around 531, class 1 is present around 534, class 2 is present around like 349 records are present for 3, is 672, for 4, 711, and for 5, 240. So this does not look like an imbalanced data set. It is, uh, it is a balanced data set altogether. You know, some differences will be there, but uh, I think we can consider this as a balanced data set. Now, what I do is that there is a very, very important concept which is called as DNA sequencing. Now, remember, I have my independent features something like this. I can't just directly give this input features to our model or to our machine learning algorithm and tell them that please determine the class. It is very difficult. So, here I'm going to also use some natural language processing techniques. And there is a very important concept which is called as KMERS, KMERS, KMER counting. Okay, and this KMER counting, uh, you know, uh, recently in a research paper, uh, you know, whenever you are working with DNA sequencing or transcription, we basically convert this DNA sequences as languages. And in order to convert those into languages, we basically use this particular technique which is called as KMER counting. Now, in this particular technique, what we do is that you can just read this particular details over here. The challenge that remains is that none of the above methods results in vector of uniform length. Now remember, whenever I want to apply some natural language processing like count of words, bag of words basically, or TF-IDF, right? Here I have a 
huge list of sequences in each and every records, right? But I don't know like how many vectors I have to consider with. Okay. So what I do is that by using KMOS counting, I make a fixed set of count variable. Now let me just give you an example. Suppose I want to use words of length six, which is also called as hexamers. Since this is a KMOS counting process, suppose let me consider that from all that sequence, I'm taking the word of length six. Okay. Now suppose this is my sequence over here. Now, when I have this particular sequence, if I consider, if I consider the word of length six, okay, then KMERS will be acting in some different way. You can see this. Suppose I have all this A, T, G, C, A, T, G, C, A. Okay. So in the first sequence, since I've taken the count as six, what it will do is that it is, it is going to take the first six characters. So here it will be A, T, G, C, A, T. Okay. Then in the next sequence, what it will do is that it will, it will skip the first one and it will take it from T, G, C, A, T, G. Okay. So T, G, A, sorry, C, A, T, G. And similarly, then it will go with G, G, C, A, T, G, C, then C, A, T, G, C, A. So similarly, it will be going till the end. Now you can see that you will be having different formation like A, T, G, C, A, T, T, G, C, A, G, T, C. G C A T G C and this all are basically you're trying to form a fixed vector. See the vector of uniform length. Now, since I have considered six hexamers, okay, six hexamers. So what I'm doing is that any long my DNA sequence will be, I will be converting that into fixed set of six lengths. Okay. And this will be considered, this will be converted into a uh, vectors by using NLP vectors using NLP. Now you may be thinking why it is done. See, there's a very good research paper. I would also provide you the link of the research paper, why they basically used uh, KMER uh, underscore K, I mean KMER counting. So that research paper link is somewhere over here. Okay. Here it is. Now you can just go through this because many scientists, how, how, what is the best way of DNA sequencing that they usually prefer. Now, once they convert this kind of, I mean, this kind of sequences into a fixed length of sequences, then they will try to apply bag of words or TF-IDF and convert this into fixed set of vectors. Okay. They'll convert this into a fixed set of vectors. Now I'll, I'll be showing you how that is done, but I would suggest that you read this whole paragraph, which I've put over here. Okay. In genomics, we refer to this types of manipulation as KMR counting and counting the occurrences of each possible KMER sequence. Okay. And this is the part of feature engineering guys, because DNA sequences, it is very difficult to understand for any machine learning algorithm. So researchers have come for or come forward with a wonderful approach wherein they are making those sequences into a fixed word of length. And then they are trying to apply, they are trying to convert that into vectors. Now let us go ahead and try to do how we can do it by with the help of Python itself. So here it is, I'm defining a function to collect all possible overlapping KMERS of specified length from any sequence string it will basically apply the KMERS of the complete sequence. Very simple. Now this is my function called as get KMERS. Here I'm just giving my sequence of the DNA and here I have basically given the size. And here what I'm doing, I'm converting that whole sequences into this particular size of KMERS. Okay. Then what will I, I, I'll get, I'll basically get the size of six, 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 uh, different, different G, uh, DNA sequences from the sequence or from the input sequence that I have basically given, uh, we'll just, uh, you know, execute this particular code and see how it will work. Now you see this, I'm taking my human underscore data inside my human underscore data. What, uh, if you see over here, just a second. Okay. Inside my human underscore data, I'm basically applying this get KMERS function on my sequence of data. Now my sequence of data is basically, if I go up, this is my sequence of data. You can see it over here. Okay. Sequence of data. Now this particular data set will get converted into thick set of six, 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 uh, you know, sequences of DNAs with the help of KMERS function. Okay. Now, and once I apply this particular function, on human data. I'm also doing it for, uh, and I'm dropping that sequence because I don't require it. I'm similarly doing it for the chimpanzee data set and for the dog data set. Okay. So that uh, you understand it. And finally you can basically apply that particular algorithm. Now, when you go and see your human underscore data dot head, now you see how this particular values has got converted. All that particular sequence has been converted into a list of, uh, you know, 
list of k-mers counting values or k-mers uh, counting DNA sequence of the length of six. Okay, and that is how we have converted. And why do we do that? Because researchers have already done that work because they may they need to make into a fixed vector size. Okay, of all these words, then only we can apply count of words or bag of words uh, for this particular uh, data set. Then the next step is that we will basically be applying scalar natural language processing to do the KMS counting that we have already done it. Now we need to convert the list of KMS for each gene into string of sentences. Now we have to combine all the sequences together. All the sequences together, once we combine, then it becomes very easy for us to convert into a bag of orders. So, so for that, what I'm doing is that I'm simply writing a simple code over here. All this human text I'm converting into a list first and then what I'm doing, I'm just joining all the list values with a blank space in between. So here you can see all are having blank space. Okay. And this particular data is basically my test data. Uh, sorry, this particular data, Y underscore data will be my output data because I'm taking from the colon zero dot values. Okay. Human dot uh, I lock colon zero because zero basically has all my classes. Here you can see that these are all my classes. Now, this is my input features. Human text will have all my input features, okay, with respect to records. And each record, you'll be combining all these particular words, all these particular sequences like this. So if you say human text of zero, here you can basically have, and similarly, if you say one, you'll have some different sequence, okay? Similarly, if you say two, you'll be having different sequence, okay? All this different sequence, and you have Y underscore data, where, which is, specifies all your output class, okay? Now imagine you have your independent feature, you have a dependent feature. You have your independent feature in the form of strings, okay? Now what all you do, in NLP, we cannot use directly strings and give it to our model. We convert this string into bag of words. So in order, similarly you can do it for chimpanzee and dog, uh, the same code I've written it over here. Now what I'm doing is that I'm trying to convert by using bag of words now, by using count vectorizer. Okay. I hope everybody know that I've already created a playlist on NLP that is natural language processing. I've explained what is bag of words, what is TFID. So you can refer that and get to know more about that theoretical explanation. Now I'm going to create the bag of words using count vectorizer. Then this is equivalent to KMR countings. And here I've tried, uh, you know, creating this count of vectors with different, different ng gram underscore rain. And finally, got the best result by making the count uh, I mean ng, under, ng gram underscore range as four comma four. Now when I kept this, this is my CV. I've done fit transform on my human text. Okay. And then I've similarly done it for my x underscore chimp and x underscore dot. Okay. So here it is. I've done this. Now you can see the shape total. You know, uh, now the total number of columns are around 2,32,414. Why? Because in count of words, a count of bag of words, each and every word will get converted into a different column. Unique word will get converted into a different column. So here it is. See this. This will be converted into one feature, one vector. This will be converted into another vector. This will be connected and converted into another vector. So all these steps have been done by this count vectorizer. So we see so many number of um, columns. And 4380, this x dot shape is for human. X underscore chimp is basically for chimpanzee. X underscore dog dot shape is basically for the dog data set. So here it is my 4380 total number of records. Now what I do, I go and check whether my data set is balanced or not. So for that, I'm just trying and trying to see my human data value counts. Now you can see over here, it is very, very precisely. All the classes are, uh, you know, approximately balanced. I know some of the data set are low, but other classes are approximately uh, balanced. So we can basically use this directly and we don't have to handle the imbalance data set problem. If there is an imbalance data set problem, I've already uploaded two videos. Either you can do down sampling and over sampling. For this, you should prefer doing over sampling if there is an imbalance data set. Okay. Now, here it is. Uh, I'm doing the train test split and I'm taking 20% as my test size. Then you can see that my train shape is like this. My test shape is like this. Okay. And my independent feature is Y underscore H, which is my human, I'm sorry, Y underscore data. So it should be Y underscore data. Just give me a second, Y underscore data. Okay, so for Y underscore data, I have so many columns. Now you can see this many records is in my training data set. And this many records is my test data set. Then what I do is that I apply a very good uh, multino multinomial naive bias classifier. So here it is, multinomial NB. 
and how did i come to this particular conclusion of alpha is equal to 0.1 i have basically applied grid search usually the grid search will take more time which i cannot just explain you directly over here otherwise we have to just wait for the execution to get completed so i have taken the alpha value as 0.1 okay and this i found it from grid search uh, then i'm doing i am initializing this multinomial uh, nb the which is my nay bias classifier and i'm doing fit on x train and y train finally i'm predicting on my x underscore test and here it is i'm getting my y underscore pred now the main thing is that we have to see our confusion matrix accuracy precision recall and f1 score after applying the dna sequencing see this is very important whether k merge counting will work or not you can see the example over here okay now here it is i'm trying to see my confusion matrix for that i have imported accuracy score f1 score precision score recall score everything okay and this is my function for get matrix i have my accuracy score over here precision score over here recall score over here and fun score over here and i have basically returned and printed it over here now you can see that my confusion matrix all the diagonal elements are my right values only there are some errors that are basically happened over here okay my accuracy is 98% precision is 98% recall is 98% and fun score is basically 98% now you can understand guys having this particular accuracy after doing a dna sequencing you know you are able to do it and that is all because of kmos counting which actually gives you a proper you know intuition wise knowledge that like how that research was actually done and what a kind of creativity they had brought to this particular data set whenever they are doing this and this dna sequencing is being used in lot of uh, you know lots of a lot of applications to, in finding disease uh, what categories of disease that belongs to now if you can do this dna sequencing you can basically do a lot of stuff later on now i hope you like this particular videos guys uh, I'll, i'll make sure i'll upload all this particular material in the github will be you can download it from there i clone it from there and uh, yes that was all about uh, this particular session i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel um share with all your friends and yes i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead god bless you all